I'm halfway done with my current project, Siege Games test map, and the sudden realization came that if the map is fully finished, there will be huge performance issues. So I did some research. What are the quickest ways of optimizing my game? But every game is different, so these will be just some general directions, so you don't have to start the research from scratch. First of all, objects which don't even move during the whole runtime can be flagged as static. It lets the engine optimize a lot of things. And there are several static flags for different optimizations. The first one is static batching. For this you must check batching static. With this one the rendering can be easily optimized by combining similar objects meshes into a single large mesh known as a batch. This reduces draw calls which makes the rendering overhead much much smaller. After turning on stats at the game tab, the engine even tells you how many batches were saved by batching. By the way, this includes not just static, but also dynamic batching. So don't get surprised when, without any static objects, it's not zero. And number two is occlusion culling. This one is very simple. What you can't see shouldn't be drawn. Occlusion culling uses the occludi and the occluder static flex. Occludi means that they can be occluded by others, and occluder means that they can occlude others. After setting up your objects, go to Window, Rendering, and their occlusion culling. On the object tab you can filter your scene, and inspect objects about their occlusion relevant flags. On the Bake tab you can start baking your occlusion data, and of course calibrate its parameters. Most of the time the default values do just fine, but if you see some object popping, then you should have a look here. And now click Bake. After it's done, click the Visualization tab and select the camera in our scene. And voila, it works, we can start rotating it and see the magic happen. And the last one in this episode is Light Mapping. Instead of calculating shadow for non-moving objects every frame, so basically the same thing over and over, we could just bake it once and then use it as a texture. This increases the performance of the game, but for obvious reasons needs more memory. This method uses the light mapping static flag. First, go to Window, Rendering, and then Lighting Settings. Then enable Baked Global Illumination. There are three different modes, each of them with pros and cons, so be sure to choose the correct one for your situation. Then go to Window, Rendering, and Light Explorer. Find your desired light source and switch it from real time to baked. Then, if it hasn't started automatically, go to Lighting and click Generate Lighting. So, this is the end of the video. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe because there is more content coming. Thanks for watching and see you next time.